I've read around 400 books in English in the last 10 years. And let me tell you, nothing else could have made my vocabulary and grammar this advance. I can't recommend reading enough. And today I'm going to share my best tips on how to start reading in English. Hey, my fellow English learner! When I was a kid, I had a dream of reading a real book in English. Not just some random stories from our pretty boring textbooks when I was at school. I grew up in the late 90s and early 2000s in a small Siberian uh, town slash village in Russia. And Getting hands on a real book in English was something I couldn't even imagine. I moved to a Greek-speaking country where many people spoke English in 2013. That's where I discovered the magical world of bookstores with real books in English. That's why in 2013 I read 11 books and I haven't stopped reading in English ever since. It brings me joy, but more importantly, reading in English has improved my English dramatically. For reading, vocabulary is key, so choose something at your level. Sometimes the book you want to read is just too challenging for you, yet. So leave it for now. You can return to it later, when you're ready. Some books from my collection waited to be read for quite a few years. But what does it mean to read at the right level? It usually means that you understand at least 98% of the text. So no more than 2% of words should be unknown to you. Let me put it this way. An average page in a book has 250 to 300 words. So this means that no more than 5 to 6 words should be unknown to you. If this page from Winnie the Pooh looks like this to you, you can easily read it. The highlighted words are the words you might not know. If the page of the book you're reading looks like this instead, you'll probably lose motivation to read it pretty quickly. It's still possible, don't get me wrong, I've done it, but reading shouldn't be a miserable experience. And the page definitely shouldn't look like this. I think you get my point. If books aimed at native speakers are too difficult for you yet, Check out graded readers adapted for language learners. These are books with simplified vocabulary and grammar, and you'll come across the same words again and again. If you're interested, you'll find a few free graded readers here and here. Read a lot of simple books so that you could move on to read anything you ever wanted. My next tip is to practice guessing the meaning of new words from context. It's a really important skill to develop, maybe the most important in reading. It will help you make your reading more enjoyable because you don't need to look up new vocabulary and dictionaries as often. And it will definitely save you hours and hours of looking up new words in the dictionary. That's what happened to me a decade ago when I was reading my first book in English, The Wizard of Oz by Frank Baum. It was a special learner's edition with parallel text in both English and my native language, and I didn't enjoy reading it at all. Because I tried to understand and translate every single word. In the middle of the book, I just stopped reading the translation altogether and I focused my attention on the English version, trying to guess the meaning of new words from context. And it worked! 
I quickly finished the book and I enjoyed it immensely and my, with my newly found understanding and motivation, I read more books in English. I am really good at guessing the meaning of new words from context, but I still make mistakes. I am currently reading a book about the history of different buildings around the world, and I was reading about the pyramids being constructed at the behest of the elite. I had no idea what behest meant. My best guess was for the benefit of rich people. Turned out it was something like on command. That's why I still use dictionaries all the time when I need them. It's your choice whether to underline or write down new vocabulary or not. In English, I usually don't, especially if I'm reading for pleasure. I prefer to concentrate on the plot, the characters, or the information I get from a book. It's a totally different story with Greek, another language I'm learning. My vocabulary size is pretty small, so I'm always reading with the intent of noticing and learning new vocabulary. But even with my low level, I still make my guesses first. Another thing I do to improve my vocabulary and grammar through reading is re-reading the same chapters multiple times. I know, I know, it's not for everybody. It can be a little bit boring, but it's really effective because I come across the same words again and again and the same grammar structures, which makes me learn faster. But faster doesn't always mean better. That's why, in my opinion, speed is not important in reading. It doesn't matter if you read one page or 50 pages a day. Like, it doesn't. But do you know what is important? Consistency. So, if you can find 15 to 20 minutes a day to practice your reading skills, that would be amazing. Reading is a skill and also a habit that you can develop. But if you want to succeed at developing this habit, don't pick up a classic novel as your first or even your tenth book in English. I understand they're really easy to find for free and that's a big plus, but please don't. Here is a really great website you can use when you feel you are ready for a classic novel. But their vocabulary and language in general are challenging for a modern native speaker, let alone a language learner. If you still want to read something classic, choose a book from the 20th century. They're generally much easier to understand. And please, please choose something you can enjoy. Nothing can destroy your motivation to read in another language as effectively and quickly as forcing yourself to struggle through a boring book. The easiest books in English you can find are probably self-help books. And if you enjoy them, go for it. Personally, I really, really can't stand them and I rarely read self-help books, but if you do, they have some really repetitive vocabulary and the grammar is simple and straightforward. Having fun while reading is so important. And I learned the lesson the hard way eight years ago when I picked up the Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer. Back then, I read any fantasy books with simple vocabulary I could find, and the Twilight series was actually pretty perfect for that. 
The language was extremely repetitive. The thing is, I hated the books. I hated every single minute of reading or listening to them. I also tried audiobooks. I was miserable, and I knew it was miserable, but I really just pushed and forced myself to struggle through the books. And this almost like single-handedly annihilated my joy for reading in English. Please learn from my mistakes and never force yourself to read something that you don't enjoy. A book or a series of books. Speaking of series of books, my next tip is to read a series, not a standalone, especially if you read fiction. You'll come across the same vocabulary again and again, and you'll get used to the language. It will be easier for you to read. And if you're enjoying the experience, you can make this experience last a little bit longer. Nowadays, I read most of my books, especially fantasy series, on a Kindle, my old and trusty e-reader. I can get my books fast, and I can look up new vocabulary in the dictionary very fast without disrupting my reading process. Try out different formats and see what's working for you. Check out different apps and programs and try reading on your computer or phone. And you can also, of course, try reading good old paper books. You can't click on them and figure out what the word means, but the feeling of having a paper book in your hand is amazing. Reading is a fantastic way to improve your English. But if you want to kill two birds with one stone and read about effective study techniques that will make you a better English learner, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time with more awesome language content!